Wavy Hammond. Really, I, 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 so many things happened. Wavy Dave Hammond. Are you a junior? No. But she says I am when she looks at me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no respect. <laughs> yeah, you know, she says I don't choke on small bones. <laughs> Did you tell her it was boneless? <laughs> crazy with that bone up <laughs> I, I, I got somebody, I, I usually, I don't remember them because it, it's confronted with them once. Yeah. You know, over the years. Uh, let's see. Um, good story from 1991. 1991. Where was I? <laughs> I mean, real one time. You know. I was in the 15 ton. I wasn't, yeah, I think I was in the 15 ton in about that, about that time. I think I went in 89 or 90. One year we had an ice storm out there. Bad one. And me and this guy, Billy Simpson, probably never met him. It used to be you had to climb down the side of the wall to get off the 15 ton. Hang on. Oh, to walk down the rail. Yeah. Yeah, when it, when it broke down. Uh -huh. Yeah, I remember that. It was scary. That pipe be going in and out. We had a bad ice storm that one year. I think pretty sure it was. Billy come up there with that pipe. Colder and shit. Couldn't get the crane fixed. There's a wire clip, expand wire or something broke. We're trying to get over these blocks of ice, I mean big blocks. Over top the stops and stuff, man. These both were scared to death. Climbing over these big blocks of ice on the railroad track and shit. It was scary. And they didn't get a harness incorporated in here until what? 2021. <laughs> well, we had hardest for the crane chaser. Just one of old style ones to break your back. Yeah. No one ever used it. You know, it was more annoying because you're going to break your back when you fall bad anyway. You're dead. What about the, um, they said that somebody brought, they had, I guess, a guy with a pickup truck came around to be on loaded with the 15 ton. Yeah, I heard about that. I heard he crushed it. <laughs> crushed the bed. You know, some stupid moron. You know, that mag would pick that truck up. See, that old mag on the 15 ton was powerful. And when it went bad, they set it out, and, 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 and the windings weren't as many in it, so it's not as powerful as it used to be. And when you turn the power off, it would reverse the polarity. And blow the scrap off of it, mm. no dang one. Mm. But that was changed years ago too. They never repaired it. A lot of stuff they didn't repair around here. No. I mean, yeah. you know, there's so many things, Kevin. I, I I can't remember them all unless it really actually happened. Again, you, know, you figure back in the day, I was pretty well into drugs and alcohol too. Remember all that shit. <laughs> what was that like being like that up on the 15 ton? Oh, I never, I never did anything up there. One time, I come in on Monday. I went out, got drunk Sunday night. First thing I had to do was change a fucking shoe cover. Never again. Keep the dial on. Jeez. <laughs> Did you have to change the shoe cover? Yeah, I'd never come in hunger over again. I couldn't get coordinated. That's a, yeah, that's a complicated task, too. <laughs> yeah, if I could, you know, I, mean, I would write, take billets and write words out in the, in the ground. Yeah, 
was hard to do too. Yeah. To get them all situated and stuff. Easy to do that. You know. Stupid things. Yeah, but that was what makes the time go by. Yeah. You know, I've done where I squared all the billets off in the car when he was so overloaded. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had them packed. Plus, plus it makes you better too. Like you practice, I guess you practice. Oh yeah, I, I just don't do all of the EMT new controls. I bet. Yeah, which I can't do with that crank EMT new controls. Substitute cover. That's a bitch practice. <laughs> oh man, to hold that thing still. Mm -hmm. We had a brake system on there that was good. And, uh, and when they replaced the old cab, it was big old pedal. I remember the pedal. It wasn't hooked up, but the pedal was there. Yeah, it would hit you in the kneecap. And I would have it tied down. And it worked good. But they never kept up with it. You know, once it quit, it quit. And we had a nice heater in that box, a OP heater. And an old box. We designed this cab where we couldn't see good out of it. We were talking about how we could design it. Where we could see good like the old cab. It's just so many things. I remember many times going up there, changing cables on that thing. Of course, the operators don't help change cables no more. Up there, when they would break over the roll pile or break over the railroad tracks, I would go up there. I'd be sitting right in the middle of nowhere where you couldn't get to it. I'd be up there fighting to get these cables on. Get stuck, fed back down. No, don't do that anymore. They won't help you. Changing contacts. That one year, I forget who it was. Dave Parch. John's, or his, Sean's uncle. The bag wasn't working right one day. But it was about 20 out the tree, and, and I said something to him, Joe Klinger, and he says, and I said, he went around. He says, well, you got to shoot the kid. They kept doing it. I had an electrician here, so. And I had to go up there. He showed a ship mechanic how to do it. Change the contacts. With Ulana, with Will Compton, too. So he had passed out here in the toolbox. I'll be blowing the whistle for him. And I would go, have to go off there, work on the crane. I used to know that crane inside out pretty good on the mechanicals. I don't know now. Or an electrical side, I side, the electrical side, I don't know anymore. I'm sure it'll come right back to you. It's the same thing that's always been up there, minus the relays for that chair, but. Yeah, well, I'm sure. I don't really have a reason to know anymore. I would have to guess. You know, I had a lot of things happen every year. I'm done. You know, I get hit with head with stuff. People throwing things in the window. Power cut off. While I'm unloading the truck with no brakes. Remember when Jeff pushed that car out and he asked Brokey if the tracks were clear? Brokey said, yeah. He said, are you sure? Brokey said, yeah. He, Jeff come hauling ass on track one and there was a roll on the tracks and it derailed down there and hit the awning. Yeah. That's what Jeremiah did to me. But I pushed the wheels all the way up to the middle of the car. <laughs> I was pushing away. Couldn't figure out why I couldn't move it. He got me towards me. And Jeremiah, and, and, I, and, it, and I, we're working with him, I couldn't rely on him. I had to keep going. Going around checking. Checking. And a couple times he got me over running number twos. And I'm pushing cars up. He's, and I saw him throw the car billets in front of the car. I would get out and I had to yell at him. So move them damn billets before you come downstairs. We 
had 150 to, to crane chase a one young man. I remember it's a good story too. True story. He was a Marine. He built, he built good too. Big arms. Always been he was my crane chaser a dirty time. And he would always give me a hard time when I do what I want to do. I fixed his wagon one day. And I had the control pendant over my GT3. And he reached over and got one of the hooks off the frame. Take him out, hanging on it. I just got to hold that pendant before you get off there. I lifted him up in the air, all the way up in the air. He was hanging off screaming. I was bringing him out and dropping him in the winch tank. <laughs> Never had a problem now ever since. It's the last one, Mike. Except, motherfucker, I got you, too. I don't care how big you are, I'm going to get you. Right. <laughs> you know? Mm. What was that one with, uh, remember John when he was out back cleaning the track when I was out there doing that? Oh, yeah, I remember that. Remember that. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. You told him, you said, uh. Well, I didn't have to do that. Right. He came around, he had an attitude. Yeah. So what are you guys doing? He said, take a break. He said, it ain't break time yet. Oh, he said, well, we were sweeping track out, and yeah. it wasn't really not much in there. Right. He said, get a pit. Yeah. And I didn't need it. He told him, he said, give us a jackhammer and we'll do it. I said, get a jackhammer and do it. And he goes, you can do it yourself. Hey, he told him to do it himself. He walked away. We never see him wrestling like did we? <laughs> You're a whippersnapper, Wavy. Yeah, right now, I'm getting worse now. I guess yeah, I got too short. <laughs> you see that light at the end of the tunnel? <laughs> well, what are they going to do to me, Kevin? <laughs> they, they won't fire me. You know, and I told Lee that one day. I wish I didn't know so much about this. Can't pull me on any job because I basically know every job, even your job. I can eat, I can weld if I had to. If your life was dependent on it, I can weld. And that's all that. And, you know, and so I stayed back here and I. I told Bob off. And one day he was back here in the tech bat. He's telling me how this steam shit works. And I pay out on him. You haven't been here long enough to know what's going on and how this system works. He didn't want to say. And I got into a Bob Tom a couple times, twice. One day they, they filled all that oil up in the mud in the wash, in both of them. And I was running out of room, so I did, I did it in a logical way. I filled I filled the one mod wash all the way up, turned the agitator on, to separate the oil, and did not float the oil into the other mod wash. I let it roll off the top. Yeah. We got in a big argument over that. I can't spend the oil floats. I need this tank. You get sucked out. Two weeks later, we got oil separators. Yeah. I'm serious. Hey. And one day, and me and him got an argument, something about I wasn't doing the procedure on my job. And that's the top. You put me on this job to fix it, fucking job. I'm fixing it. Go the fuck downstairs, let me do my job. I didn't see him wrestling. You remember when a tank was overflowing out here and spraying? <laughs> Look, Wavy, Wavy had 19 out here overflowing with caustic, and it was like a mist. Like the wind was blowing, it was like a mist of caustic. Oh, that was a spark. We spat. Frank came in here. Why can't look at his face? His eyes are burning. Yeah. Anybody seen Joe? <laughs> Anybody seen JT? It's like, nah, what's up? He's like, uh, fucking tank out there has got a leak. Walks back out. I see him through the doorway. He's like, "Shit's going into the 
eyes. He walks back in. Yeah, tell him the story. I, I, tell the story again. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, it's true. I'm so spent time. Who was it that came in? Frank, Frank's outside. Frank comes inside, wiping, wiping his eyes. He said, anybody seen Joe? Right. We're walking back out front. I see him through the doorway. He's got fucking mist spraying in his eyes. He's looking, trying to find where the leaks come from. All this caustic spraying in his eyes. And he comes back in. He's like, see Joe? He called Joe. JT's somewhere else. He's coming. He's on his way. Next thing I know, I look out front. And Wavy's out there with Tom. And Wavy's got it dialed down or whatever by then. And Tom's out there yelling at Wavy and said all I remember hearing was Tom said it's a, it's a it's a big fucking deal and Wavy said oh it's not that big of a deal I was like no it is a fucking big deal he just said it ain't no problem yeah you know what the deal was on that what's that I come in and it was a long long flight oh transition bang 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 okay the meter board is two foot off All right so I thought I had two more foot left to put in there. That's why he, I told him to stop at a certain point now. And I'm standing out there. And next thing I know, this shit's coming out like a waterfall. I had my other hat on, big hat, where the shit would run off. Coming out of the top over top of me like a waterfall. Mm. You know, because I was waiting for it to fill up by the meter board. Well, was I wrong? That thing lied to me. The other day it happened with a uh, selfie to me. Okay, I'm filling a selfie tank up. The other one was dead because you guys were doing the clean out. And the filter worked tremendously well. Because there's no dirt in it. No dirt in it, you know, filter's asshole. I walked out there and I just caught it. It's flying out at the top of the tank. I'm, you know, looking, I'm looking and saying, what the hell is this? It's getting me, spraying me in the face and shit. And when you know the valves I had to get to, is where I, and the shit was spraying on me. You know? And, and, and um, so I finally went back and shut the thing off to stop it. But that was the day no one told me, um, you guys are done with that tank. I come in, Justin says, I don't have it bolted down yet, because we didn't know what we were doing. I didn't know it was bolted down. I left either. No one told me. I would have started filling it up. You know. <laughs> anyway, it was coming down on me like that. And we already had an oil slick back here from when I drained the oil out of that tank. Because I sometimes it's hard to do one person. You gotta roust up a fork truck and be quick with the valve change. Or you'll overflow something. Tom couldn't make the valve change quick enough. So he overflowed all over there. Laid there for two weeks, three weeks. And then when I overflowed it this time, I took him out there and I said, I don't want this back in DT9. It looked terrible. And then he didn't drop the ball. He says, well, if you went and overflowed it, but you just all this oil in there, I'm thinking, yeah, you motherfucker, you're the one that did that. You know, pushing it off on me in front of Bob. So we got jet blast in again. You know, that's what I was thinking. I said, oh, yeah, he dropped it on me good. <laughs> <laughs> I made it out to me. Mm -hmm. And I told him what to do and how much to put in there before you shut valves. So you can continue to drain. Now, he didn't do it. Next thing you know, black shit's going out on top. All over the place. I had it all down, all, all the way down my pit leg. I'm back after steam hose, steaming all this oil off me. <laughs> What's the, um, you ever go swimming in any of the tanks? No, it was before my time. They used to do that? When they first, seven, eight, nine, and ten, and there was trucks, tanks. Okay, they stopped it 
five, six. Right. Okay. And of course, the filter room was put in like 1990, 1991. So uh, I met some people here who were first employees, zero one, zero two, and zero zero. And when they put them in, they used them for. They would swim in them when they first put them in. Uh, so they never used to filter the stuff. Yes, they did. How they do it? Filter the same way, but different filters. Where were they at? Okay, where the, where the air compressor is. Mm -hmm. There was a small filter press there. Actually, it was the two of them small ones, a real small. Every one or two hours, you would have to crack them open and clean them. Not like every four hours, like I do now. And that's where they were. And they would shovel the mud up. And they had a little tack out front with an elevator with dumpsters and they dump the mud in there and clean the mud up and ship it and pump it out to the mud pond. Then once a year they would get a clamshell crawler frame, those old dinosaurs, and shovel it out. Basically, we had two main transfer pumps. When they put this new system in the mud room, because a lot of tanks were eliminated and a lot of processing was not used no more. Most of these seal some of the pipes by the bottom of cutter coming out of the wall. Big old pipe that used to go into railroad tracks, out to the mud pond, and to fill the half moon tanks up. And I'll be out there and I'll be watching that shit bubble on the ground. On the other side of the railroad track where the pipe was broken, it bubbled out of the ground. Mm. Totally different place, it sounds like. It sounds like everything they had here, everything about this place has just been doing away with something that they can't work with anymore. And, Putting like a, something else in to, to try to compensate for it. Because of the environmental. Okay. They changed for the environmental. Like but I mean, like the, the filters. Why did they change to the filter room filters? Okay. Because these filters do a lot of better job. That's why. When they put them up there, them filters are fucked up now. They had all types of safety devices on there. Not on All of them. Had sensors on there, would go up the doors up, it would shut down the pumps, electric like able pumps. And, you know, the able pumps, they, had, they were great. The problem was, they wouldn't buy the right diaphragms. These new air pumps, you feel how stiff them diaphragms are, and they're built like a, like a little bowl. Now, they would use whatever rubber they had back there, mm -hmm. black, white, red, and they would blow up because that little wand would push them in and out. Mm -hmm. I still have pictures of those able pumps when I was tearing them down and just fucking a cake full of mud, ice cream, and caustic crystals. Yes. Those things are fucked up. That, because they wouldn't buy the right diaphragms. Yep. Because I remember punching holes out for all the bolt holes around there on the rubber. Yeah, you know, and motherfuckers were annoying. It took almost all day to do one pump. Yep. Out to chain balls and jacks, jacking pipes up. And sometimes it would be a little teeny bit of scrap steel in there with these soft rubber things. We slice them up. And we got wooden hammers out of handles one day, jammed in the valves. Nuts and bolts. How does, how do you get a wooden handle in there? Where does that come from? It sounds like it comes from you. No. <laughs> I guess when it got near the bottom, it sucked it in. I remember when I first started in maintenance, I did two different bail scenarios within like two or three months apart from one another. And um, taking them apart, I found chipping hammerheads in them. Yeah. Two different... Yeah, it will. That, that solution to it starts flowing, it'll suck. 
What's the most mischievous thing you've done here? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> One of the most mischievous I things. I can't remember how I'm going to be. I don't bother no more. Because if people changed. Yeah, but you, you used to do mischievous stuff. Well, that's to keep people. Morale. Going. If I make people laugh and play around, I get good work results. The people I got now, too many, too many feelings. Too many feelings. Remember, you used to uh, hide those fucking bags of sulfide around. Oh yeah. Just stick up the whole fucking plant like eggs. Yeah. <laughs> but the people here, I don't bother them anymore. You used to. You would, what happened with the dog? The dog people. Oh yeah, yeah I, was <laughs> I hated that guy, Timsky. What would he do? <laughs> he didn't go on 12 hour shift and we show up late every, every day. Foreman, Bob Dyer, he'd be passed out on the bench in here. So, and I'd be needing bottle cutters and bail rules, but there's nobody around. And I'd come down there and say something to Calvin, little Billy Primero, and Bob. He said, Well, that's a bottle cutter's job. Well, where is he? So one day I got in the start to seven. I took a bag of dog shit. I just cleaned the big pile up out of my yard. It was a pretty warm day, and I stuck that bag in there and ripped it open and took it. Easy. He come out of his bag of dog shit, screaming, Someone stuck a bag of shit in my bottle cutter. And, and then Bob Burnham was here at the time. He was, he was a good working foreman. Laughing his ass off. So while everything I got in some comment, he's out there ain't a 15 ton shaking his bag in there. Someone put shit in my bottle cutter. I'm up there laughing my ass off. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that one day I put a, I found a big blackbird a dead weapon. Yeah. It's not alive, man. I put yeah. it in there. I just want to give you guys this one. Like they don't want it. They don't want it. About, uh, What's something else you've done? Well, one day, Mark Pierre was a puffer. I mm. found this big old black bird, a dead one. Mm. <laughs> so I stuck it up underneath the pump, knowing he's going to have to put his hand there <laughs> to open the valve. He couldn't see, and that thing fell out, and he about shit himself. I remember this time, me and Justin was uh, disassembling this fan for this bag house. And we got it off, and I'm reaching inside, feeling around, and I'm pulling random shit out. <coughs> and I'll pull out this fucking dead bird carcass, big old dead bird. I just throw it over the side of the rail. And me and uh, Justin go down there a little later, and Ed's all like, fucking dead bird falling from the sky. I don't know where it came from. That thing had like maggots and shit in it. It was, it was in there a little while. Yeah. It was rough. Yeah, it was. It was fucking disgusting. Cherry fell out. What the fuck is this fuck dude? Cherry fell out, wavy. There's a cherry on the uh, floor. I don't care. <laughs> that, that day, uh, Jake Carruthers was here. And I had some night crawlers. When I was fishing the day on Sunday. I never did find out what happened. Because after a while, he started sticking mad. I stuck him beneath this desk. <laughs> it was taking him away. Jeez. I said my brother, when, when my brother left here, I sent my brother a picture of a orange peel stuck on one of the basket outlets, the tank outlets. I sent him a picture of it. He, he wrote me back. He said, wavy, with a question mark. Yeah. Well, that day with Fort Orange's with Norm, remember him? Mm -hmm. you, you probably didn't meet him. I met Norm. Okay, he's running at 30 ton or 50 ton at the time. And I had one of these miniature oranges. And I had the whole thing shoved in my mouth, peel and all. And, and I snuck up behind him and I, and I tapped him on the shoulder. He turned around and looked at me. Scared the shit out of me. Scared the shit out of me. 
He says, I just shit myself. <laughs> and then again, he, he says, can you take over this green quad and take a shit? <laughs> I, said, I said, no. <laughs> and walked off. Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. Well, I'll sneak up behind him and drop a big bolt behind him while they're running the crane to make him jump. I used to do that to the bottle butter. Reach out over the 15 times when they're chopping. And I would throw a big chunk of metal out on top, make it sound like blade breaking. <laughs> what, did you, what did you used to do to the the shoot when they, when they were running number twos and they fall asleep? When they, when they fall asleep? Mm. Oh, well, I used to make them back up. How do you do that? You turn the power on, and you clear, clear just enough off where you get the mag on the shoot. And the mag would stick to the shoot. And then you let the mag slide down, and at the same time the gate's opening. Mm. As soon as that gate starts to close, boom, push Smash them right back. back up in there. Uh, ram them right back up in there. They used to get so mad at me. Yeah. Wake up. Ah. <laughs> One time I threw a railroad wheel in there, I didn't know it. Mm. The big old railroad, they, they know the gondola up of number twos, and a big old railroad wheel in there, I didn't know it, you know. And well, I knew it was something when I picked it up. I said, fuck it, it's going right. to <laughs> I threw it in there, and it was bam, boom, bam, boom. <laughs> and Tim Ski was up there, and he wasn't paying the mind and tried to press this big railroad wheel up. I need to press. That's gonna go over real fucking well. What? Calling them peacock to work on the backup train on a fucking Saturday. That's gonna go over real fucking well. Oh, well, Mike. Twelve, I said <laughs> twelve days left. Twelve days. Twelve days. Who gives a fuck? That's boy Sean. He needed that Saturday, Mark. You shut my shit out, you way, Mike. I got into Bob yesterday. One filter needs cloths. I got one pump. Okay, so I can't change cloths until the filter out of commission. Why well, I can't. It's a job to pull them plates by hand. I've done it. I said, well, me and Dan's going to take it Sunday and change the cloths on this filter. Well, is there another way you can do this? You can do it on a Saturday. I said, if the filter's running, I can't do it. And I told you before, the 200 pound plates. And in these new cloths, as he can tell you, they don't, they don't roll very good. And they're hard as shit. One man can't do it. Right. Now, and he says, well, I, don't, I hate to see pigs up to Sunday's page to do this. I said, you know, I can't change them when I'm using the filter press. And I said, I'm not going to be pulling them plates again. I just pulled that other filter every plate by hand. And that's a job. So I ain't doing that no more. We were in round circles about that. Because they didn't want us to come in on Sunday. So I'm going to get Galleon involved on this one. You know. I'm always arguing with them. When that press, first press went down, I... I got pissed off and pulled the pump out myself, hoping they moved real faster. And the other press was fucked up. I finally got the problem fixed. And I kept bitching, I need another filter press. Then that's why they cleaned that mud out of that tank, because I had a bad filter press for months. And I couldn't shut it down, I couldn't figure out what was wrong. And it took that for them to figure a way to do a bypass where I could switch hoses to one press to another. To fuck the whole system up, to get something else working. That's probably why we ain't got no fucking tin up in it. Oh, they blamed it on that. <laughs> I had Ted suck all that mud out of that tank in the mud room. I mean, the, the cloths we had were defective. They would get wrinkles in them, or the holes would not be in the right spot to fill a drain hole. We had to try to figure a way to make it work in a way. No eyelid holes. We get a knife out that's got eyelid holes in them. It's in crash for you. You know, and it never worked. They took all that for them to get a 
figure out, and they still ain't got another pump ready yet. I argue all the time. <laughs> What's the most mischievous thing Wavy's done, Mike, that you know of? <laughs> a lot, a lot, of Mike. Like, Dog shit in the bum of You told us oh, that yeah. one. That was funny at Tim Skeet. Oh, put shit in the mother gutter. That oh, was funny that day. I'm up there laughing. I remember, I remember you used to always go up. In the wintertime, you'd go up during lunch in the 15 ton, turn the, open all the windows, turn the heat off. And in the summertime, you'd close everything and turn the heat on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it was nice and ready after lunch for us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Always love greasy tracks when operating at night. Like. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you got any dirty jokes? No. I have to think of something on my way in. I'm sure Monday, once I get pissed off, I'll be thinking of all types of nasty things. That day, well, it was a couple weeks ago, my leg was hurting pretty good. And I got up, I have a hard time getting out of the chair sometimes. And I said, Tom, I'm hurting pretty bad. And he says, well, what's hurting on you? And I said, my asshole's hurting. Can I borrow your tongue and apply some preparation H? <laughs> 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 he just looked at me and said, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> you ain't right. <laughs> you ain't right. <laughs> All right. I'll see you down later. See you later.